All right, so I want to show you how we can easily make our terrain with just one tiny change to our old Perlin noise function go from this rolling hills graph or steep hills graph into something more dynamic and chaotic like this. That's a really significant change and it really only takes one line of code. So I'm going to show that difference. Now if you haven't seen my previous video where I walk through how to use Perlin noise to generate terrain dynamically, uh, I recommend you go check that out now. The link is in the description. Additionally, the link to this code example is also going to be in the description below. So let's take a look at how this works. One is I want to call out that this is dynamic. It's happening in real time as I'm making changes to the fields. That is another minor change that's here. So we have the stretch. We can see very easily how these values are manipulating and changing the data. Uh, including when we move things inside of this. All right, so let's take a look at the code. Uh, in order to get the code, I'm going to go into Terrain Tools. And the first thing I'm doing is I'm always executing. The reason I always execute is because that gives me the on enable function even when I'm inside of the editor. Now I want to call out that this code operates fully without the editor as long as you have something else that's executing these commands. The pull terrain or the redraw terrain mesh. Now that's private right now, so that's not going to be able to happen. But just make it private or uh, public. Okay, so on enable, when that gets called, all it's effectively doing is calling pull terrain. So I have that function that's supposed to be available to other classes outside of this to execute, but then on enable for inside the editor, I need it to happen as well. All we're doing is grabbing a copy of the terrain data, the, the mesh for the height map. Um, if you haven't, if you're unfamiliar with this part, again, the intro video where I talk about how to work with terrain and how to use Perlin noise on it to create those rolling hills dynamically, that it's available in a link to, at the below. Right, below. Next, on validate, any time in the editor when we change one of these fields, like the height multiplier, or the Perlin stretch, or reset what the terrain data is that we're looking at, or change something about the animation curve, that triggers a command called on validate. So basically, any time that we make a change to that, it's automatically redrawing the terrain mesh with the new changes so we can see what those changes are in real time. OK. Now, again, we're doing a for loop on x's and y's to go through every point of the mesh, and we compare it against a Perlin noise. And we're multiplying that by some sort of frequency or stretch functionality, so it increases or decreases the amount of space that that's covering. OK, and we have height multiplier as well to dictate how high it goes. Now, that really matters here, uh, especially because of the fact of this, how wildly different this terrain style can be. OK, so inside of this, we've got the Perlin noise. Um, that's what we're generating. This generates that number for us uh, between 0 and 1. Now, of course, the height map is also 0 and 1. So we're basically just evaluating that as if it were part of the time on the animation curve. How much time have we passed by on the animation curve? In other words, this value down here, we're passing in somewhere between a 0 and 1, and it's going to pass between a 0 and 1 back based on the data it sees. So this one is even. If we pass in 0.5, it's going to return 0.5. If we pass in a 1, it's going to return a 1. Uh, but we do something else like this, and we pass in a 0.5, and it's giving us a 0.75. All right. Oh, and that's sorry. That's my. I'm covering up a lot of the video. Uh, some of the stuff that we're seeing in here. So yeah, these different shapes. We get all sorts of wild different designs for it, and we can mix the uh, the harsh stuff with the softer stuff. Uh, you can just do something like this there, and then you end up getting the solid mesh bits of terrain along with the more fluid pieces. Okay. So in the code, this is really all it takes. We just take that Perlin noise between 0 and 1 and pass it into here, and it gives us a different value back. So we can restrict it and always say that as we're traveling along, normally we'd be coming up to the peak on this even slope of whatever it's going to be, 45 degrees, whatever. Um, it comes up evenly. 
but then we're basically changing it and saying that okay well for that first bit that we're going in it's going to be here and then we're going to we're going to increase really rapidly and whatever kind of design pattern you want for how that's going to rise and look up okay so i hope you find great use for this uh, i'd love to hear about some of your own exper uh, experiments with terrain and different types of features you find to work really well i'm planning on expanding out on this series and keeping it going to add all sorts of different things especially some of the fun stuff that happens when we have multiple sets of pearl and noise and some other tools and utilities to help shape the terrain but with specific design goals in mind for your levels all right talk to you later